So you gonna keep that? Or what? Thank you to our final patrons, Red Wolf, 4765, Midnight Gem Lord, and Sean. And a very big thank you to our $25 patron, Alex Ice Rose. Now, we're having this breakdown slash discussion on whether or not Gawain will actually get a sacred treasure now that she and has always had Lita. Please don't forget leave your own thoughts on that in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, hit that little over case most of us out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do have a patron down below. It's for as low as one, cut him one, down the exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Now, let's hop into the discussion. What's up guys, all the fans here, and here we are to talk about Gawain's sacred treasure. Or lack thereof, or it does exist, or something in between. So obviously, very soon after Gawain's proper introduction into the narrative, we did see for the fact that she did have that stick on her. She do keep it strapped at all times. Not necessarily because it's like never on her, she just sums it to her, but still, she got that piece on her. And notably, she's the only one out of the four knights to actually have like a proper, confirmed, at least partial sacred treasure. Notably, Percy has Dragon Handle, but Dragon Handle doesn't seem to have any special properties as a weapon. It's mainly just a sealing implement, so it's kind of just a handle that's shaped like a dragon, and thusly it doesn't necessarily do much. Lancelot has his bow and arrow, which just seems to be a generic bow and arrow. There's nothing fancy about it. And while Tristan does have Estrosa and Mael, they don't appear to be sacred treasures, or at least they haven't gotten the hype or the notoriety to be that. They're just blades that happen to be references to the Fallen Angel. But Gawain has Lita, which is... A knockoff of Rita, and by knockoff, I mean literally a piece that was knocked off the original axe and forged into a miniature blade. And I'm wondering, one, where the heck did it come from? Like, <laughs> so seemingly enough, I always used to blame Merlin for it. Like, she just, you know, took a piece of Rita, bada bing, bada boom, slapped it on a stick, and there you go, you had Lita. But Merlin, like, isn't with Arthur. And presumably enough, Gawain is with Arthur, or was, until Tristan came and retrieved her. Somehow. I don't know. That's another weird thing that I wish we got more elaboration on. I hope we get more elaboration on. Like, we kind of glazed over the fact that Tristan probably went into Camelot territory, took one of the royal family, and left. Hmm. But still, somehow that managed to happen. We don't know who made Lita. Maybe Gawain forged it herself. Maybe there's just a random blacksmith. Like, notably, we don't know how durable Lita really is, but we do know it should have been extremely heavy. Like, remember, it's stated by Nakaba that Rita itself, like, the whole axe is heavier than Gideon. Gideon. Remember that thing that was lodged in the side of a mountain? Yeah, Gideon. Rita as a whole is heavier than that. Even just the piece that Gawain is carrying around should be extremely heavy. And I don't know who managed to forge that bad boy. But regardless of that, Gawain technically does have a sacred treasure. It's just um not really a sacred treasure. We don't know what properties this thing has. Notably, the original sacred treasure property of Rita, the axe, was to store the excess power release from Sunshine. But Gawain seems really inconsistent with Sunshine anyway. In a similar vein to Escanor with his glasses, she can seem to choose whether or not she gets gains or not. Like, notably, throughout the entire off-day chapters, those little spurts where we had no combat, no action, post the Leonis invasion arc, Gawain was kind of just tiny, and once again, she never actually picked up Rita. She kind of just dropped in and it's been gone. So we don't know if it has the same properties of the charge and fire. We don't know if it has charge and fire in general, like it can absorb and then release a massive burst of energy. We don't know how proficient Gawain is with it, because notably every single person she fights with it is kind of too strong for her. Like, legitimately, she ran into Pelgard, who molly whopped her, and then ran into... Chaos Gallon, who was pretty much immune to all her attacks until she duranegged him. And then she ran into Melagallon, who was kind of just Chaos Gallon, but worse. Who also kind of ended up negging her and she needed to use all her magic in one big magic burst. So we have no idea how proficient she actually is with the weapon. Seemingly not enough. If Pelgard's pulling out here with, you know, nothing but a big old stick with a ball on the end of it and absolutely mollywhopping you, you're probably not too good with your weapon. So I'm wondering, is Gawain going to get a new one? Because we know a big plot point right now is that Meliodas taking the journey away from Lancelot, is actually hunting down Nabuzu, wherever he went after Curse by Light. Because notably, he was around. If you check the end... Not the end credit scene. There isn't an end credit scene. Well, there is. But if you check the end of Curse by Light, you can see Dolly and Nabuzu, I believe, in the fairy realm? They're either in the fairy realm... Yeah, I think they were in the fairy realm. They had left the demon world. So they are alive. 
supposedly, and Arthur doesn't seem to have them, at least as far as we know. That was a big theory at the time earlier on in the series when we hadn't seen Arthur or much of that. We thought maybe he had Dabuzu and was like having Dabuzu produce weapons on mass form, but we haven't seen that just yet. But Meliodas is currently looking for Dabuzu since Lance can't to get them sacred treasures. But the question is, will Gawain get a new one? And if so, what will she do with Lita? Because Lita could just stick around. Notably, it's not impossible, it's not like stated anywhere that a person couldn't dual wield sacred treasures. Like hypothetically, Meliodas could have lost Vane and Quirtus. King could wield the Gideon and Chastiful. Merlin could have Alden and Rita. But it seems a little bit unprecedented, and notably we don't know how strong Lita actually is, because notably the sacred treasures are stated by King at least very early on to have a much higher impact on magic multiplication than regular weapons and obviously being barehanded. So does Lita give a partial amp, and if so is that why Gawain would replace it, because it's only a fraction of a sacred treasure, probably not even a 15th of the full mass of Rita, or would she feel partial to the weapon and not want to get rid of it and maybe dual wield it? I don't know. And if so, would the weapon gain any extra properties being synced with another weapon? Is Lita just going to be destroyed? Notably, we have Gawain going into another fight right now at the end of chapter 97, or not the end, but in the middle of chapter 97, she does pull up on this group of demons barehanded, but it seems very likely she's going to summon Lita, at least as a conduit for a weapon. So I'm wondering what the fate of this little axe piece turned mini blade is going to do. Because it could be something incredible. It could be something crazy. Imagine this acts as the basis for Gawain's new sacred treasure, a piece added onto it. Like, hypothetically, I'm much in the camp that I would love it if Gawain's sacred treasure was like a shape shifting hammer. Like, in a similar vein to Gideon, but instead of it just being one set size, like, depending on her size, she can use it at different stages. So, like, say it's nighttime and she just has, like, a tiny hammer, like one, like a baby sledgehammer, essentially kind of like a mini Mjolnir, but instead of like a really fat head. Can I say that? Yeah. It's just, so instead of having a really fat head, it's like a tiny little sledgehammer. And then when she gets big, the hammer also gets big. So it's like massive, almost Warhammer-esque in size with a really fat head. You know, I question... I question myself sometimes. Not just for the algorithm, but just for my own sanity. But with that being the case, it would be cool if her sacred treasure implemented Leah. Like, hypothetically, I get Nagaba not wanting to introduce dual-wielding sacred treasures, because, like, even if Leah doesn't provide the same level of amp, which is something we don't, we don't know. Heck, hard could be enough. We don't 100% know if Lita is really from Rita. We do, but we don't. Nagaba hasn't sat down and verbatim told us that. But I don't think he'd introduce dual-wielding sacred treasures, because then, like, everyone else would kind of need to get a second one. And to be fair, you kind of could have some. I even believe that Tristan could hypothetically get two swords instead of one, just to parallel, you know, the demon and goddess side, light and dark. He'd have one dark sword, one light sword like he already has right now. It seems that dual wielding is kind of already in his archetype, so maybe he gets two? Maybe? Hypothetically, it wouldn't be impossible. And hypothetically, you have the whole issue with Dragon Handle. Is Percy just going to get rid of that? Presumably, I think it's going to get stolen. I'm going to talk about Dragon Handle and Percy having it in its own video, but I'm assuming that's going to get just jacked from him. I don't think we're going to just allow him to keep that for the entire narrative. Meliodas has to get taken out of the plot somehow, and if we aren't going to get rid of him because we got to keep him around to get, bring people back to Four Nights, then we're going to seal him. So we're going to have to keep Dragon Handle away from Percy eventually. So I'm not exactly sure what Lita's fate is going to be. And the reason I'm so fixated on it is because it's the only one that's already, like, partially sacred treasure or if not flat out a sacred treasure because every other weapon that everyone else has does not give the same advantage so notably gawain should be a lot stronger because she already has a sacred treasure tier weapon and like realistically solid mid-series if not like end of tier series power with sunshine plus the magical abilities that she got from being a merlin surrogate so reasonably gawain should be sniggity snapped but it's neither here nor there. I'm especially wondering whether or not Lita may just get broken. Because it's already been established that Rita can shatter. It's the only? Like, we've seen Chastifel get damaged. But usually it just regenerates itself. Because it's a piece of the fairy tree. So it can kind of just regrow. But Rita is the only sacred treasure that actually takes significant damage enough to actually, like, shatter and break. 
because Lost Vey never did, even up against like Demon King tier threats. Quirtus never did, even against Demon King tier threats. Chastity Fool was sliced up and torn apart a whole bunch of times, but it just regrew itself. Gideon even never got, but then again, Gideon never had like opponents that was probably capable of shattering it. Like she never hit the Demon King. <laughs> She never hit the Demon King with Gideon, and Alden isn't like a direct combat spear, and even the Twin Bow Herod, it's a light construct more than a I still don't know how Dabuzu made that. Like, he must have had Goddess help with that or something. I have no idea how he made the Twin Bow Herod, but regardless, I feel like Lita's fate is very up in the air. I Personally, if I could have it my way, I would write it so that Gawain keeps it to kind of like get a better understanding of Escanor as uh, wielding his former weapon and she sort of just has the vestiges of who he was constantly on her not just in sunshine but in the weapon she wields dual wielding it alongside a new sacred treasure so we kind of get like that extra thing and i'm playing to talk about how gawain may kind of have like a low potential cap in comparison to a lot of her contemporaries within the four nights but another video for another time so i would like that but most likely i see the Lita either being just forgotten about just absolutely forgotten about because when she has a real sacred treasure what's the point of keeping a faux sacred treasure around like it literally doesn't do anything that the real sacred treasure couldn't do especially if this real sacred treasure ends up being a two-handed weapon but then again like none of the original now i think about it, none of the original sacred treasures i mean maybe gideon but even then it only has one i think it only has gideon even has one grip on it so realistically none of the sacred treasures have been dual-handed rita isn't lost vein isn't bond wields core juice in two hands sometimes but usually that isn't chastity doesn't even get wielded traditionally neither does alden the only one which is two hands is herit and that's a bow and arrow so that's kind of different i don't think Gawain's getting a bow and arrow so i could definitely see lita kind of just getting forgotten unfortunately and i don't i mean it's all right once again i think it's just a neat little reference if you get it you get it but if you're just a four knights reader leader doesn't mean anything to you it's just a sword heck you don't even know what's a sacred treasure or a piece of one that's just not even established hinted at or implied in the narrative of four knights you need to have seven deadly sins knowledge to know that so maybe lead is going nowhere maybe i'm just overthinking it but i think it could be really cool if we get an homage to Escanor eternally through the usage of a piece of the past. However, that's what I think. Please know what you guys think will happen to Lita in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure the little case supposed to be out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do have a page down below. Each support for as low as one. Count them one dollar. For the videos, early content, and more. I also now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Now, thank you so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Nagel the Pencil, writing off.